Welcome to another Waters and Stanton video. My name is Peter Waters G3OJV and since my last video I've travelled back uh, from Scotland. Uh, my rail tickets there <laughs> uh, had a few problems like uh, we were on the train from Glasgow ready to leave when suddenly we were told uh, late afternoon that the train would only be travelling to Preston but we could pick up another train. Um, but then, fortunately, before the train left, we were told that no, that was a mistake. Uh, we could go to Preston, but there was no train to take us on to London. So, we had to get off the train and stay another night in Glasgow. A very enjoyable night, I have to say, but it, uh, it prolonged the journey somewhat. <laughs> there we are. Anyway, what I'm going to talk about uh, today is antenna tuners in general, because I know a lot of you, particularly newcomers to ham radio, um, are a bit confused about do you need an antenna tuner? I mean, if you've got a tuner inside your radio, why would you need another tuner? Well, let's first of all um, put things straight that the antenna tuner is really not the correct name because you can't tune an antenna remotely. And this, of course, you have one of the Step IR antennas. It really is an antenna matching unit, AMU. Uh, its task really, well its task is to actually match the low impedance output of your transceiver to whatever impedance and reactance is presented by the antenna system. Now no antenna system is perfect, so generally speaking a little bit of antenna matching um, is very welcome because it gets you near perfection. You'll never get to perfection of course, but it does get you near to perfection. Now, there's a wide choice of antenna tuners, but let's get back to the antenna tuner that's in your radio. In days gone by when we had valve transmitters with uh, what we call Pi networks, there was no need for an antenna tuner in many cases because the transmitter had the Pi network, which is a form of antenna matter anyway, uh, and it could handle quite a wide range of, of impedances. And uh, Back in the good old days we used to get away with even en fed wires being poked into the back of the transmitter. I say transmitter because in those days they were transmitters rather than transceivers. Anyway, fast forward about 30 odd years or so, um, we come to present day radios or transceivers which are solid state uh, and they are very fussy about the antenna that is connected to the, uh, the output socket. Two things that happen. First of all, the, if there's a mismatch, the, ant the, the transceiver doesn't like it. Um, it becomes inefficient and also uh, once you go beyond a certain point, say 2 to 1 or 2.5 to 1, the output power will actually drop and it will drop and drop and it's, it's dropping because the protection circuit doesn't want that uh, transceiver to feed power into something which is effectively mismatched and if it wasn't for the protection circuit the PA devices would blow so it's a good feature to have and it's, it's in every rig anyway so don't even worry about it. Point is that if the transceiver now is so fussy about what uh, is plugged into the back of it, then uh, some form of matching circuit is needed. Now, in recent times, in the last, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years or so, it's been begun to be popular to have an antenna tuning unit inside the transceiver. Now, of course, that's good news because it means to say that you've got an antenna tuner with your transceiver freebie and it works quite well but there is a problem there's always a problem isn't there <laughs> there is a problem the problem is that that antenna tuner inside the radio has only limited capabilities uh, it's not it hasn't got the capabilities of an external antenna tuner it will handle modest mismatches it will handle a dipole where the dipole is resonant at one end of the band and you're operating at the other end of the band. 
It'll handle sort of three, maybe four to one VSWR quite happily. But once it gets beyond that, then it runs out of puff. And in actual fact, what happens is that you press the tune button and the tune button sort of returns a red signal, or whatever it does, um, and tells you that it can't match the antenna. The uh, MFJ914 is an antenna auto tuner extender, something you add on. So let's have a look. As you can see, it's quite a simple unit. It's a, a small box with uh, switch positions. Uh, one is uh, dummy load, um, and then we go around in A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A effectively uh, is a bypass uh, um, position. Now, the idea of this is you place this between your transceiver, which has an auto ATU, and your antenna coax feed that you're trying to match. And this is quite a magic box. I've, I've used it uh, a number of times, uh, particularly with G5RVs actually, uh, where I had trouble in matching them. And it's quite amazing how it does extend the capability of your auto ATU, your internal auto ATU in your transceiver. I would uh, recommend this as a, as a first um, port of call if you're having trouble in matching. Now, as you can see on the uh, um, on the back of the unit, we've got three uh, sockets. One is predicted with the antenna. The other one goes to the uh, transmitter or transceiver. And then there's another one on the right, which uh, enables you to connect a dummy load. So at any point in, in time, you can uh, switch in a dummy load. And then there's also an earth uh, connection there. Now let's have a look inside. As you can see inside, there's not too much given away actually. There's a switch and some uh, some cores, ferrite cores, but that's about all you can actually see. Looking at <coughs> looking at the um, MFJ PDF, it's uh, actually a switched impedance uh, transformer. Um, can't see much by looking inside, but uh, it shows a switched. Uh, um, impedance transformer so that's how it achieves its task but I do have to say that um, it does, does it do remarkably well the good thing about this is if you place it between your antenna and your transceiver you've only got to flick a switch there's only about six positions on it you've only got to flick a switch to the known position press your tune button on your transceiver and you're, you're there so my bet is that if you've got a 5RV or something similar to that that's got one band where it's a bit difficult, this will probably solve the problem. So there we are. So let's, um, let's, let's move on. So assuming that you need an external antenna tuner, let's have a look at uh, the options. Basically, there are two options. So you've got a manual tuner and an automatic tuner. But before we uh, go down that road. Let's have a look at the basic circuitry of a commercial antenna tuner. Now I'll put up on the screen here uh, what is known as a T-match. Now the T-match is by far and away the most common circuit used by commercial manufacturers of antenna tuners. <laughs> it looks simple isn't it? And it is actually very simple. You've got two capacitors in series, two variable capacitors in series, and then at the point where they join together, you've got an inductor which goes down to earth. And you can see why it's called a T-match because the configuration looks like a T. It's a good choice for commercial manufacturers because it's wide ranging and uh, it's uh, at the same time very simple. You could make your own. Uh, the problem is, of course, you've got to find a couple of uh, capacitors large enough and you've got to find an inductor or make an inductor. And then that inductor has to be variable in some form. It can either be switched or it can be a variable inductor. And then you've got the t all the bits and pieces uh, that go with it, an SWR meter and so forth. 
and so forth. So you, you can make an antenna tuner and although it looks simple, the circuit looks simple, by the time you've actually got the cabinet wired it all up, it's debatable whether or not um, the most sensible option <laughs> is to buy one. Uh, there are some little snags you can get with antenna tuners where you can get self resonances with, with the coils, particularly on the HF bands. So it's another little uh, area that you need to be aware of. Anyway, I'm assuming that you want to buy yourself an antenna tuner because to me that makes makes sense. Let's look at the the manufacture the the um, manual ones first of all. Manual ones um, have got a very wide range of capability. They'll match almost any antenna that you like to connect to them. Uh, most of them will handle. Uh, N-fed wire and balanced line and all of them will, will handle coax cable. I would suggest that if you're looking for an antenna, manual antenna tuner you make sure that it will handle all those three things. You want coax, you want balanced line and you want N-fed. You may not need it now but you, you may well uh, require it in the future. Now the, the the strange thing about ante manual antenna tuners is that you can adjust them to a particular frequency by, um, you've, you've got usually two, two capacitors we've shown in the diagram and a switched inductor. And with those three controls you can come to a point where you get minimum SWR which is probably the best um, position for matching the, uh, the antenna and you can make notes of where those settings are but you can then find other settings you can find perhaps put a bit more inductance in or a bit less inductance and twiddle C1 and C2 and you'll find another point generally speaking it doesn't really matter you, you'll probably find one point is very fine tuned and very, very twitchy where you'll probably find another point which is a little bit broader tuning and you want to go for the point where it's a, it's a, it's a little broader in, in, in tuning the, missing item I've always felt is a current meter. Now a, a current meter is the, the meter that measures the current flowing through the coax cable or through the end fed wire and you really can't argue with the fact that the more current flowing, assuming you've got a short circuit, the more current you're, that flows the more power is going into the antenna system. And I mentioned this to Martin Jew quite a few years ago now from MFJ and uh, he actually has produced some current meters. They've never, as far as I can recall, ever incorporated a current meter in an antenna tuner, but they do make current meters. Otherwise, when you adjust your antenna tuner, and it will come with instructions, basically you're looking for minimum SWR, and that will be shown on the SWR meter, usually on the tuner, but not all tuners have uh, SWR meters. So, that's the basic um, manual tuner, uh, very easy to use, um, they're, 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 they don't need power and it's all done with your voltage, um, so you just put them on the desk, connect uh, your, your transceiver to the uh, input on the antenna tuner and then connect whatever antenna you require. And some of these tuners have got um, uh, antenna selectors so you can have more than one antenna. Some of the tuners have got a built in dummy load which is quite handy, MFJ you do some. Uh, antenna tuners with a dummy load. It's not a bad thing to uh, to go for actually, one with a dummy load built in. So there we are. So that takes us on to the automatic antenna tuners. Their automatic antenna tuners are, uh, I was going to say they're fairly new, but they're not new anymore. <laughs> They've been around for an awful long time. Um, basically there's, there's two types. There's, an in, there's, a, there's one that you would use in the shack, in other words we call it an indoor, let's call it an indoor automatic antenna tuner, and there's one that you use out, outside which is obviously weatherproof. Now the one that you use in, in, inside is really um, an automatic version of the manual version that uh, uh, I was talking about just now. Um, they will usually handle uh, well, certainly handle coax cable, they will usually handle end fed wire and they will usually handle balanced line. And as, again, I would say that if you're going to get yourself an automatic antenna tuner for the shack, consider one that will match those three types coax, balanced line, and end fed wire. That covers all the, the things that you need. You do need to power the uh, antenna tuner with 12 volts. 
Um, again, the connection is very simple. You just connect the output of transceiver into the ATU and then you connect the appropriate antenna. Some of the automatic antenna units have also got um, selector switches so you can have more than one um, antenna uh, connected to it and you can switch between one and the other. Uh, so they do need power, but the great thing about them is they're, they're instant. With a manual antenna tuner, once you've found the correct settings, you need to make a note somewhere on a bit of paper or wherever where those settings are. Um, and then when you come back to them, um, you probably have to just finely, finely tune it because some of the uh, settings are quite fine. So it's not an instant band change bump on the air. But to many people that doesn't really matter. Auto ATU is a different different ball game. You change bands, it knows which band you're on. As soon as you tr it gets a whiff of RF, it tunes itself, um, usually within a fraction of a second. It may hunt first of all, but they have memories built in so that if you come back to the same frequency with a similar antenna, it knows what the settings are and it does it almost instantaneously. Um, but they do need power. Uh, the um, antenna tuner that sits on your desk, of course, you just connect 12 volts to it. Um, some of them have got um, uh, built-in um, information such as uh, reactants and, and so, impedance and so forth. Um, others have just got basic SWR meters built in. There is also um, an external and automatic antenna tuner, and they're, they're very useful actually. Um, they're totally weatherproof. Um, SGC were the first people to really bring them to market in a big way. And I used to know Pierre, the uh, MD there, but suddenly he died suddenly, well, quite a few years ago now. And although the company did limp on, um, without his drive, they basically, I think they've virtually stopped manufacturing now, as far as I know. But. Uh, the idea is that you put this antenna tuner outside, you need to need to earth it because they're basically designed for N-fed wires, but they're very, very good in doing that job. They're very good at tuning N-fed wires. Um, MFJ have taken up that uh, that now, and you, the MFJ produce a, a, a range of uh, external antenna tuners. All you need to do is have a wire down the garden, um, connect it to the tuner, Make sure that the tuner's earth because you do need an earth on with an NFED wire or sort of counterpoise, and then take coax back to the transceiver in the uh, radio room. How do you power it? Well, the MFJ ones use um, a coupling unit so that they actually send DC, 12 volts DC, down the coax so that you don't need a separate power line. You've got a little, uh, little box uh, in the shack that uh, you connect 12 volts to, and that controls the ATU. Most of these ATUs will start tuning when they've got about three watts or so forth. Half of what is pushing it a bit, but if they see three watts or so, they will start to tune, and once they've tuned, that, that, that's fine, uh, and off you go. So the auto ATUs are great for speed. Um, they're compact. Um, yeah, they do the job. They do what it says on the tin. <laughs> So, how are you going to make up your mind which one's right for you? Well, the two main brands um, that we sell and I think are the world leaders is MFJ and Palstar. MFJ by far and away make more antenna tuners in terms of different models. Palstar have just a few models. They do do auto ATUs, but they're manual. They do a nice manual one actually. Um, which uh, you can look at on our website. A MFJ do a range which covers different power levels, um, different facilities, and um, it's really uh, up to you as to whether you want those particular facilities. Uh, but they, they all basically do the, the job of tuning the, the, the antenna. So I would say look at those. I'm not gonna pick out a particular model because there's so many and you really need to look at what the, each one does to see whether it suits you. But uh, they certainly um, will solve the problem if you have a problem. Now, going back to, the, to where we started at, you don't need an antenna tuner unless you need an antenna tuner. If your built-in tuner in your transceiver works fine, there's no point in bolting another one on. It's not going to give you anything you haven't already got. It's not going to make your signal louder. It's not going to do anything at all. It, in fact, all it will do is repeat what you've already got in your transceiver. So if your transceiver will match your antenna, 
then you don't need an ATU. If you're using kayak systems and you're having problems in matching, almost certainly the MFJ914 Auto Extender will probably solve the problem for you. But if you want to go beyond that, um, using balanced uh, balance feeder, uh, if you're going to use NFED wires, then you really do need some form of external antenna tuner, or antenna matching unit as we should really call them actually. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are. Well, I hope that I've um, uh, given you some information on uh, antenna tuners and uh, perhaps helped you make up your, your, your mind. I haven't forgotten that I was going to talk about vertical antennas and that is coming shortly. We've had such an awful month. It's, we're now into the beginning of March in 2020 and it's been rain, rain, rain. Um, and when it hasn't been raining, I haven't been around. So uh, I will get back to vertical antennas shortly and do a series on that. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for sticking with the whole of the video. <laughs> Don't forget um, to press the subscribe button so you know when another video is coming up. I do appreciate your encouragement. I get lots of very nice comments and uh, uh, I am very grateful for those. And um, we've got quite a few more videos coming up. So keep in touch. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your home radio. Bye for now.